old school friends. Here I have a Rockford Fastgate Punch 2 25.2 power amplifier from around 1998 or 1999, I'm not sure. And this one is not working, it's broken. And uh, here's the main board. And what I, sorry, what I found out, I have two shorted output transistors. So there are six for each channel. The other channel is completely working. The right channel is broken. And I'm not going to uh, exchange only these two transistors. I'm going to uh, change all six output devices um, because I don't want to mix old parts with new parts. And I will take six transistors from the same production line to avoid further problems or trouble. After the repair, I'm going to perform an output power test. Now I cut the legs of all six devices so it's easier to dismantle them. So all legs are off. Now it's time to take out the heat gun and get these guys off the board. I switch my heat gun to the maximum position and I try not to heat up my camera. So it's a cheap heat gun from the discounter will do the job well. Just get on the maximum level. First one. Second one. So that was easy. And now I let it cool down a little bit. It's pretty hot. Just taking out the legs. This will take some minutes. After removing all the legs, I have to suck some holes into the board. So I take the sucker, making a little bit hot, a little bit hot. And then now voila, we have a new hole inside. So 18 holes left. And it it's pretty easy. So after 15 minutes, all transistors are back on their place. Not very pretty, but it seems to hold. Now I'm going to take my solder iron and um, make them fit to the board again. Make them connection. Now it's time to put the main board back into the heatsink section. This is my special tool, original from Rockford Fosgate. I got it in 1994-1995. The main board is back in its place and I hate myself because I lost the original screws for this so I had to replace it with standard screws. Before I connect my amplifier to a power source unit, um, I have to make sure the amplifier is not pulling a lot of current. So if it does, there's still something wrong in the amplifier. First, I use a weaker uh, power supply to limit current. I show you in the next step how it's done. Um, if you connect it to a bigger power supply, like a battery, I always use this one, an inline fuse. This is an automatic fuse uh, like this. That saves a lot of money. Now I turn on my small power supply and I adjust a voltage of about 13 volts and I now have to limit the current. This is done by shorted. So maximum current is 4 amps. That's okay for me. I expect this, this amp to to have an idle current of about one ampere. The amplifier is now connected to the power supply and here is my remote cable and I touch it to the remote connector and then the amplifier turns on. 
you can see it when the red LED is burning. So it's the first start after repair. I hope nothing goes up in smoke. Ooh. That looks nice. That means the amplifier is pulling 0 0.8 amps. That's almost one amp. That's pretty cool. That seems uh, to me that everything is running good. Nothing is broken. You can see it's glowing. And um, if I turn it off again, you can see the amplifier will at the beginning pull a lower current and then goes up to 0 0.8. This is uh, the turn on delay. I have connected my Rockford amplifier to a crappy speaker. It's for testing. Hit the play button. Now I take my speaker cables to the right channel. I go to the defective channel. And it still sounds great. Now I test bridge mode. So this should be a little bit louder. Yeah, you see, the repair was successful and uh, now I'm going to make a high power test. I need a bigger power supply for it and I have a 4 ohm resistor for it, made by myself. Everything is just connected to test the amplifier's output power and if I take a look at this, you can see... Uh, I try to show it... Uh, if you can't read it, the amplifier is rated 112.5 watts on 4 ohms per channel. I have hooked up my scope. Uh, the blue line shows the output voltage of my 20 kg heavyweight power supply. The yellow uh, beam shows the signal of the speaker output. And I apply a 50 Hz sinus tone. Uh, because uh, cheaper multimeters will measure correct at 50 Hz, some don't uh, at higher frequencies. So I measure at 50 Hz and it tells you a lot of base power of the amplifier. Um, then measuring with 1 kHz, uh, the German standard, we will forget it. I also have a clamp meter. I have another multimeter that monitors also the output voltage of the um, power supply. I have another multimeter that uh, shows us the RMS output voltage. Output power is easy to calculate, it's just multiplying output voltage with output current, that's watts. And um, I will give a lot of power with my gain and um, take a look at the signal and if the signal gets dirty and starts clipping I will reduce so we will have correct values not hocus pocus power but real American watts. My power supply will make some noise I just start and uh, by putting up the remote cable to the amplifier so there's my signal, a little more, take the screwdriver to hook the game up, and now the game begins. Now you see that we have some voltage, I give a little more, I'm on maximum, I give a little more punch space. Uh, you can see at the top the sinus gets dirty, I reduce until we have a clean signal. So we have 28.25 volts and a current of exactly 7 amps. So we calculate it. I stop. 28.25 volts and it was 6. Point, I think 9.7 sorry. And that's 169 watts per channel. That's Rockford. It always delivers more output power um, than rated because it's a very low THD. 
Well, I think I deserved a nice cold beer. Uh, I'm going to enjoy my beer. Uh, it's, uh, oh shit, expired in 1997. Damn. Okay, no beer today. Goodbye.